last talk of the day before, the drinks. Um, so I'm going to share some of my experiences in building community, uh, and not just about community events, but like the wider definition of what a community actually is as well. And uh, this nice man's going to bring me a clicker as well, hopefully, so I can move around and do a bit of interpretive dance, I'll keep you all awake. I appreciate that uh, it's the last day of the talk, and you're probably last day of the talk of the day, even. And you're probably quite quiet, tired, so I'll uh, try and make this as uh, interesting and, uh, and fun as possible. Let's see if this works. It works. There we go. I can move around. Uh, so this is me. Um, oh, yeah, this is my new uh, Twitter uh, profile. I've changed it a bit. Uh, I see that uh, one of the comments from uh, was uh, Brexit is all about selling pig's ears to China. So obviously that's what I've called my Twitter now. So uh, I may change it back again. Uh, but this is me. If you want to reach out to me, talk about anything after this, uh, uh, when I'm not around in person, then feel free to reach me out on uh, Twitter or any of the channels in social media as well. Uh, I am a little bit biased, obviously. But then tell me somebody who isn't biased. I try not to let my biases get in the way. So if they do, I apologize. But uh, I have certain things I like. And you'll probably discover what those are as we go along. Um, this is the talk before the drink. So I'm going to try and keep it nice and light. Um, I can't promise that you'll get some of these drinks at Skills Matter. But you will get uh, a nice selection of drinks to keep you uh, entertained. And it's a good opportunity to actually share what you've learned during the day, actually during the drinks. It's not just about drinking as much as you can for free, um, although that's quite nice. Uh, it's also about kind of sharing what you've actually learned today, uh, and actually by sharing what you've learned, it'll help you remember what you've actually learned today as well. Because it's so easy to go to a conference, especially a two-day conference, and then forget most of it uh, the next day when you turn up on Monday at work. So by sharing experiences, you learn from each other, but you also remember, retain a lot more of the interesting things that you uh, picked up from, hopefully. And so why is community kind of important? Why is like other people important? Well, this idea of a lone coder, or a lone anything, a lone designer, a lone manager, a lone community builder, you can't do things by yourselves these days. I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you're a craftsperson building uh, something very unique, or an artist working on a painting, you might be working alone, but you're not still working in isolation because you're inspired by other people. The designs, the crafts you come up with are always inspired by what you see in the world, what happens in the world. So even somebody working by themselves is still affected by the wider world. It's very hard and sometimes unfortunate. It's, it's, it's not easy to switch off some of the world out there. Uh, sometimes I wish we could switch certain parts of the world off, but uh, let's not go there today. And, and the truth is out there, if we, we do anything in software development, most of the time we're going to either Stack Overflow or Google to help us find the answer. If we don't know something, we get stuck. We go to these virtual communities and we find the answers. Or at least we find something that takes us on the next step to finding the answer or figuring out the answer. Um, one of the reasons I started blogging was I'd find three, Google, uh, art, three articles via Google that collectively gave me the answer. But there was no, never anything, one thing that gave me the answer for what I wanted to do. So I'd write a blog. So the next time I searched for something because I'd forgotten how to do it, it was on my blog as well. So there's a huge amount of information there on the internet. Uh, making sense of it is the, is the big challenge. Uh, and again, it's just another example of the fact that we're not working in isolation anymore. So what is a community? Uh, and more importantly, what makes it valuable to all of us? Uh, so the definition, a uh, simple definition if you Google this, is, uh, is, is it's a group of people. It doesn't actually say how many people is a group. I mean, a lot of people think community has to be, well, this size. But it doesn't have to be that big. It just has to be more than one. More than one people is a group, is a community. Uh, and so the more interesting thing is uh, having certain attitudes or interests in common. So having a reason to actually talk to each other. That's the, the basic formation of a community. And we usually have something in common with pretty much most of the people we meet. We might have a lot of things we don't have in common. But it's the things that we have in common that help us bring us together and therefore bring uh, a community together. So my kind of definition more specifically is that uh, it's more than one person with a keen and a sliding scale to passionate interest in something, whatever it is. It could be, could be closure, it could be web, op, web uh, DevOps, 
could be any kind of technology thing, or it could be making jam, could be making soya milk, could be anything that they have an interest in, uh, and willing to somehow take uh, a participation in, so to learn or to share more about that thing that they have interest in. And for me, that kind of sums it up. So it doesn't set any kind of limitations or barriers to entry there. Uh, a community should be very, very welcoming and, and allow anybody who's interested to get involved. And so we can see a lot of community stuff that we're doing. It happens all the time. We haven't really forget all these different things that kind of is, oops, all these different things that actually drive our daily lives, our daily work lives, all these things that we rely on. There are communities behind all these things that we often really don't really appreciate as much as we should do. So I encourage you to th think about these every now and again. Think about what you're actually using, the communities behind them. Uh, and if there's an opportunity for you to contribute to these communities, then, then do so, even if it's just thanking them for all their hard work. It's great uh, to be able to do that. And I think tying it back to a lot of the ideas in this conference, you can think of your development team as a community as well. There's a group of you, you're going to spend a bunch of time together. You may as well try and do the best you can to get on with each other because you're paid to be there and you, you, need, to be, uh, you need to be there, so you may as well make the most out of it. Uh, and you can also learn so much more when you're not just a group of individuals, but actually a group of people really, really closely working together. Uh, how, many, how many people work in a team? There we go. You're all in a team. Uh, and how many people really collaborate in that team every day? That's, that's really good. That's good. That's good. Also, we obviously didn't define what collaboration was. Uh, collaboration could have been arguing about whether we should be using this or that library. It's collaboration. If something comes out of it, then that's, that's, that's a really good result. Um, and so communication can be really, uh, really successful for all involved. It's not just the collaboration in a team, the community sense in a team. Uh, it's like for the individuals, it can be really drive uh, your success, you can drive your career, but it can also make just turning up to your job a lot more fun as well. If you're going to work and you know you're going to learn something new from your, the people you're working with, that's so much more interesting and so much more engaging than actually just turning up and hoping that your code doesn't have any bugs in. Uh, that day as well. So it kind of helps you set your sights higher uh, and encourage you to keep on learning and, uh, and exploring different ideas and different uh, ways of doing things. And also for the team, you can do more, you can collaborate more, you can feel uh, like you can trust the other people in your team, you can go to them with any challenges. If there's something you've forgotten, you can go and ask your team without feeling like you should already know something. Um, you don't have to feel embarrassed about asking questions. And, and the customer, uh, company itself, because company itself that has uh, very collaborative teams can be more successful, be more aware of what's actually happening inside the wider industry because the team's collaborating, they're discussing ideas, they're not just kind of taking one idea and running with it, uh, they're not just kind of adding to their technical debt, they're actually just exploring different opportunities and knowing the value of what those opportunities are. And the great thing about community is that you can be a member of more than one of them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm from North Yorkshire, which I personally think is the most beautiful place in the world. Uh, slightly biased there. Um, I'm a cyclist, but specifically I ride a Brompton as well. Um, I sometimes get, I don't know if I get funny looks from other cyclists on their slightly larger bikes, uh, but they seem to uh, take that smile off the face when I speed past them at the, at the lights uh, when they turn green. Uh, I'm also like, a citizen of the UK, and also a proud citizen of the EU, uh, because you can be part of both, uh, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Um, there we go. But you can also be part of lots of different communities as well. I, I'm slightly closure obsessed, as people who know me will realize. Um, I was very much Emacs obsessed, but now I, I also uh, dabble with Vim. Uh, with the thanks of uh, Space Max, I can do both. Uh, and I've subscribed to far too many meetups on, uh, uh, far too many communities on Meetup that I can actually ever go to. I think there's over about 60 groups on there as well. But it gives me an opportunity of, of things I can get involved in. If I need to know something, if I'm doing something new at work, 
if I want to learn about something, if I want to learn about AI on neural networks, I know I can go to the community and not be completely lost. I can go in there and actually have some kind of foothold on learning something about that technology, learning something about that topic. And it gives me a bigger boost than I would do just sitting there in front of a computer trying to Google for answers. And so if you are going to actually run a computer, a community, or run or create a community within your team, then you have to figure out what it is that your community is about. And one of the reasons to do that is so that other people know why they should get involved. A uh, community does benefit from having more than uh, two people, so actually encouraging them and helping them understand what you're actually trying to achieve as a community is very valuable. Um, so take, let's take I don't know, software craftsmanship uh, community. Um, so they are defining their, their essence of what they're doing. Is, it's about a mindset. It's about thinking about something other than just shipping code uh, within a certain amount of time. Software is much more important than that. It's about a whole bunch of other things. And they've actually defined uh, a nice uh, manifesto uh, to actually give you more details about what they care about. And so this is really interesting and also inspiring, but it also gives you lots of points to talk about. Why should you get involved in it? What should you actually talk about when you turn up to this community? What does it actually mean by steadily adding value? It's a discussion point. It's, 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 a, it's something that the community values, and there's lots of different ways to be able to engage with that. And you can, use your, you can share your own experiences and learn experiences of others by doing so as well. Uh, other communities, we have a very simple uh, goal. Uh, we try to be very beginner-friendly in the Clo London Closureians. We're trying to help everybody understand closure just that little bit better than they do already. Uh, and not just closure, but generally functional programming as well. And so we try to focus on yeah, putting the fun in functional. It's a bit of a pun because obviously fun is short for function. Uh, but it is, we think, the language is a fun language to experiment and learn in. Uh, and so we kind of try to figure out what the essence of getting involved in this community was all about. Uh, and feel free to join this community if you haven't already. Um, and so, yes, it's important to set the scene about what your community does, but then what can you actually do as a community yourselves? Uh, and there are many different things to do, and here's just a few ideas. Uh, so within, even within your own development team, if you want to turn your development team into more of a, a community in its own right, then there's things like brown bag sessions or essentially lunchtime talks. Uh, and this can be about something you want to learn or something you've just read. So maybe you go to YouTube and you watch a video over the weekend and you think it's really interesting and you're wondering whether that topic that you've covered, is that something that's really applicable at work? You get together one lunch time during the week and you sit around and talk about it. Maybe watch uh, snippets of the video, uh, but you can discuss it as a group saying, well, how does it fit into what we're doing? And just doing those simple things, you're actually learning a lot more from each other, and you're keeping the environment in which you're working at really, really interesting as well. And it gives you chances to, again, explore ideas in a safe, fairly safe environment, and um, yeah, see, what you, see how far you can push those ideas. Uh, also, during work, there's pairing. How many people actually do any kind of pairing or mob programming? Loads of people. Excellent stuff. So, Again, I don't need to talk about that, so that saves a bit of time. That gets us closer to the drinks. That's nice. <laughs> Anybody doing book club? Oh, there's a few people, yeah. So for those people who don't, so you take a book, uh, you read a chapter a week or a month, depending how big the book is, uh, and uh, then you get, again, you get together at a certain point and discuss it, either, either at the end of the day or lunch times, uh, and get together. If your company is quite progressive, then they might let you have actually some time during work to do these things as well. Uh, it supports your own personal growth. Uh, usually most companies have some kind of learning stuff you can do. You can persuade them that these things are actually part of your uh, career path, your learning path. They might let you do them as well. And that also includes doing catters and coding dojos. Again, they're, they're, you can find time in the day to do these things. I appreciate that working does drain a lot of energy, but actually doing these things are actually 
very good at reinvigorating you, actually giving you a bit more energy because you don't have to worry about deploying it, you don't have to worry about technical debt. They're purely about discovery, possibilities, ideas. They're not about actually getting anything done. The only thing you're really doing is hopefully learning and discovering a little bit more. Uh, and ideas like FedEx days, although I'm not sure they're allowed to call it FedEx anymore, but that's the graphic I found when I Googled. Basically having a day where you can, uh, or, or even like a, uh, like a two days, uh, where you're allowed to just work on a project that, that potentially could be relevant to the company, and you spend it with a, one, it might be your, your own project, you work in a little team, and you build something that's not directly part of what you're doing, but could be something interesting to the work. And you might take some of those ideas you've talked about during the lunchtime sessions and so on, and actually build something and say, well, what can we actually build that uses this uh, technology, uses these ideas, these concepts, and actually radically changes what we're doing? And again, it's another way to reinvigorate what you're actually doing at work and making work more fun. And then you can obviously, uh, if you're doing more of a developer community or wider things, or even like some, I've not seen some teams actually do some of these things with inside their own uh, uh, company as well, actually having organized monthly meetups. So that again, if you go to meetup.com, you see hundreds of talks every night. You come to Skills Matter. There are many, many talks most nights. Uh, you can go to as well. Uh, coding dojos, personally, I, I like those quite a lot because it's a very practical uh, uh, thing to do. Anybody been to a coding dojo? Most people, okay. Um, so for me, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an hour, an hour and a half, kind of actually just sitting down coding with other people. So it, it, even at the end of the day, you, you can find enough energy to do that, uh, as long as you don't eat too much pizza at the meetups. Um, carb loading is not that great for... Uh, keeping you uh, awake during the evening. Uh, but it's a great way to kind of tackle little challenges, little catasized challenges, and actually try something different. Uh, try something new, learn a little bit extra. Uh, and it's a great way to give you some confidence in learning something, especially going to learn something slightly different to what you're using every day. And obviously, things like conferences and hackathons uh, are really good. I mean, they're really good for, again, sharing and learning from people in a much wider kind of uh, geographical area as well. So I assume that not everybody's from London. So who's from outside of London? Whoa, that's most people. <laughs> OK, there we go. That's quite a lot of people. Anybody actually from London or live in London at the moment? For, uh, if, uh, greater London, M25 or, yeah, OK, there we go, a few people. That's, that, again, that, that's, that's really surprising, actually, because a lot of London conferences, it's 50-50, like London and then uh, uh, people outside the world. So it's great, again, uh, conferences is a great way to access that wider community in face-to-face. -face. And actually having a face-to-face -face, uh, community experience is really good for helping you strengthen any communication you're gonna have when you do go online as well. So if you're actually in any uh, software craftsmanship, virtual communities like Slack uh, and so on, then actually meeting somebody and talking to somebody face-to-face -face is, is, that kind of builds that initial connection, so you feel much more comfortable actually talking to them in the virtual world as well. So the, these kind of in-person things are, while they do take more effort and involvement, they do kind of help you uh, make those real connections and uh, which you can extend in the virtual world. Uh, so I'm going to go through some of my community experiences to kind of show you uh, what, what I've done. Uh, why was my phone not switch on? There we go. Ooh. Yes, not quite drinks time yet, soon. Um, so I started off in the community, I guess, by learning Linux. Uh, first time I tried to learn Linux, I had to I used 83 floppy disks to install Linux back in the good old days. That was an experience. Um, and then, thanks to the community, we got a tape drive, and that was revolutional. I could, I could install Linux in a couple of hours instead of a day, so that was good fun. Because if you get 83 floppy disks, and the 79th one is broken, <laughs> and you're on the only machine that can actually make the new one, you have to start all over again, which is not pleasant. I only did that twice. Um, so I was very thankful for the tape machine, um, which are uh, surprisingly reliable, so that's really cool. Uh, and then I did Linux for a lot of time, so I was exploring the community there. I was learning how to do things by reading the docs that the community had written, uh, using the software that the community had written, 
Uh, and then I wanted to give something back. Uh, and so by that time, I'd moved on to, I'd gone through Debian and then on to Ubuntu. And um, I was using Ubuntu every day. I was trying to inst encourage people at work to use Ubuntu. I'd, I managed to sneak in Ubuntu on one of my uh, uh, desktops at work. And so I, I wanted to help other people use it because if you'd never used Linux before, why would you want, why would you want to? Uh, and if you did want to try it, how did you do it? And it's nice to kind of have that person there to give you just that kick start to answer the kind of simple questions that sometimes you just can't Google for. So all we did was just basically find a pub that would let us just sit in their big space for free uh, and, um, uh, and hope for the best that we could find some plug sockets. Uh, they had some Wi-Fi uh, so we could actually install things. And, um, and we got together and just advertised it. And we got, we got about 30 people turned up and we spent the afternoon in a pub. Um, I didn't really get around to drinking much because I was, I was too busy kind of helping people do stuff, which was probably good uh, for my health. Um, uh, but it was great because I learned a whole bunch of stuff about um, Linux and what you could do with it and what, you, uh, what the opportunities were. Uh, but I also learned how to encourage other people at work to actually use it as well because lots of people were asking me questions and giving me ideas about what they wanted to do with it that I'd never really considered. So it was a great way to kind of open up my uh, horizons about what you could do with something I, I cared about already. And, and I also got more into um, so the graphic side of stuff. So I started creating, uh, this is one of the better ones I've created. Um, you should see some of the terrible ones I created. Um, so actually trying to promote some of the ideas I was doing and I, I started getting more into showing people how to use some of the, uh, some of the open source software. So this is uh, Inkscape, which is an amazing uh, tool for creating uh, lots of uh, graphics, uh, scale of vector graphics uh, uh, designs. And uh, so I help people do video editing, personal design, using uh, Linux itself and database uh, and uh, desktop publishing too. Uh, and that was really good fun because again, it helped me learn that craft a lot more deeply uh, because I had to show people how to do things and they kept asking me how to do things I didn't know how to do, so I had to learn them. Sometimes on the fly, sometimes I got to go and get back to them and then add something to the next version of the workshop as well. So it's a great way to learn stuff by trying to teach other people. And I've probably done that, I've probably taken that approach most of the time for the, for the last few years. Uh, the way I learn things now is by trying to teach people. As some people have known, I've tried to teach them closure, and I've probably learned more by teaching people than actually just trying to learn actually myself. And, and so I really got into the community when I joined the, the LGSC. Oh, look, who's this fellow? Look at him. Oh, this guy's crafted ship, George. Oh, how cute. So, yes, yeah, Sandra, Sandra was there. And I think for all of us, I mean, many of us have gone on to like, spin off our own communities as well and got involved, and Trisha has been doing some uh, community development uh, at various companies as well. And so it was a great experience. It was, very, it was a very positive experience being part of an organizer, and I think the most valuable lesson I got from this is like, it's so much easier organizing things when there's a whole bunch of you. Um, so definitely encourage you, if you're going to start a community, get other people on board to help you, uh, even if it's just uh, trying to make your development team more of a community. Get, get, find a few people to, to help you. Uh, it makes it so much, so much easier. Delegation is, is a wonderful thing. Um, uh, and we also did some community uh, outreach to universities as well. So we took a lot of the ideas that we were doing in the, in the London Java community and took them to the graduates as well. And they were so sort of really keen, really enthusiastic. Even going to some of their events, uh, you'd be there at 7 o'clock in the evening, you'd be a little bit tired. But their enthusiasm and their questions and their sort of real lack of understanding of the industry kind of really helped you think about what you were doing and what you wanted to do with your career and why you were doing things. We'd, we'd do these meet and mentor sessions where we'd spend like a, an hour and a half that evening and we'd go around each table of students and we'd explain what we, we were doing and, and answer some of their questions about what they wanted to do uh, as a career in, in industry. And what I found was, well, it really helped me think about what I wanted to do with my industry. And I actually changed a lot of the things I was doing and actually got 
much more interesting jobs after like, mentoring other people about what they could do because I started to think about it a lot more as well. I wasn't just taking the next job that, that turned up. Um, and I also got involved in organizing London Scala. I actually went to, I actually went to visit uh, the London Closure community so I could figure out how to run London Scala events like the Coding Dojos. Uh, then I found out I preferred uh, Closure over Scala, but that's, uh, we won't go there. Um, and then somebody actually decided to pay me to actually do all this community management as well. So you can't actually get paid for doing this that stuff. Surprisingly not. It wasn't just about wearing t-shirts. It was actually about building a, a real community and getting people engaged and encouraging people to, to get involved and learn stuff and, and, and benefit from the community. Um, that was really good fun. And also doing, I, I, and then somebody wanted to pay me even more money for doing it, so I went there. Uh, and doing things like explaining how Heroku works and explaining, really kind of helping people understand what the technical uh, challenges were that we were facing every day. It really helps you kind of uh, think about what people were doing and what the, what, the, what the challenges were and put you in a place where you could really kind of influence people uh, but also learn an awful lot about what they were doing every day as well. They, people are very kind of good at kind of sharing stuff when they get into the right kind of frame of mind. Uh, and so actually helping people to feel comfortable to share about what they're doing without thinking that you're like trying to sell them something. Um, that was somebody else's job. Uh, I was there to kind of help them understand what the options were, what the possibilities were. So that was really good fun. And one of my most enjoyable things is to do Hack the Tower, where I get together, I bring uh, like about 100 people um, from the community. We get together one Saturday a month and we just do whatever we want to do. We, we have a space and we build things. Uh, we get into groups, we talk about the things we want to, to do, the projects we want to work on, the technology we want to work on, and we, we just split up into groups and do it. And then if we change our minds somewhere during the day, we, we can go off and join somebody else. And people have been running workshops and, and so on as well. I know feed people with uh, uh, some very cheap sandwiches from Tesco's, but they seem to like it, so that's nice. Has anybody been to Hack the Tower before? Oh, a few people. There we go. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're on a bit of a break. Hopefully, when we get a new space, because I'm not at Salesforce anymore, uh, then we're working on a new space where we can do this all over again. Uh, and again, it's, it's just a really nice kind of community feel. So even, even though it's a Saturday, it's not work day, you're not getting paid for it. People turn up, they really enjoy it, and they're, they're, they're saying that they're missing it. So that's, that's really heartwarming to hear that people actually really got so much from that event. If you want to host, then please let me know. Um, and there's also a lot of, if you don't want to run your own community, there's actually so many communities out there that you can get involved in where you can make a real difference. Um, so we've been doing a lot of one-off events with Transcode, Women Who Code, and Codebar as well. I think Codebar is particularly good because it encourages people to get into computing. So you have to actually think about why, what, what is good about our industry as well. I mean, there are, uh, negatives and positives about uh, our industry, and, um, but actually encouraging people to make that first step into being a coder, being a developer. Uh, there's so many things that they get thrown at them about what they could do, what they could do, what language they should choose. Um, Cobar is a really nice safe space that so they can go to and learn something. And one, one week they might be learning Python, one week they might be learning Clojure, one week they might be learning Scala, one week they might be learning JavaScript. Uh, and it's a great way to, um, to gauge with it. And you can go along as a coach and just help them make that one little step forward uh, in, the, in their learning and give them a little bit of confidence about what you're doing. And it's am amazing how much you forget about things and the simple things that we do. Uh, so I found that going to Code Bar helped me fill in a lot of blanks that I, I tend to forget. Um, which goes on to inspiring other people. So I as Went to one event called Hacked.io, and there's a guy uh, I met called Joe, and he was there with a, a handful of other people from uh, Nottingham University, and they had a great fun weekend. Uh, but they also, from that, they, they built their own community. They built uh, HackSoc, which was uh, uh, Nottingham University's uh, hack society, computer society, as it were. Uh, and they had a great time, like, again, encouraging other people. They, they were only just starting computing themselves, but they're encouraging everybody in that course to get involved and to do more than just the university course, more than just what somebody else is teaching them. And the people that actually went and got involved in that did really well for themselves, really 
uh, help them drive their career and shape what they could do. The possibilities opened up for them, really. So they did HackSock, and then quite a few of them went on to um, something called Major League Hacking, which is the student organization for hackathons. And this is a worldwide organization, organization now. And, and some of the people I met there were actually running the whole of Europe, uh, the organization for the whole of Europe, within a couple of years. Uh, and Joe now is actually working for GitHub. Oh, and he's got his little GitHub uh, mascot there as well. So he's actually got an amazing job, uh, amazing career, working for GitHub, uh, just by getting involved in a few events, which inspired him to get on involved in more events and get involved in the community as well. So it's amazing to see how uh, people can really benefit from just their community involvement. Um, and you don't have to do all these kind of uh, in-person things. There's a lot of things you can do virtually as well. Uh, one of the things I'm doing is mentoring somebody, uh, name disclosed, no, I'm hiding the name, um, but I, I set up a, a, a Slack channel, a Slack community just for uh, me and them. I'm, I'm just mentoring them on, mainly on closure, but just kind of anything in general that they want to talk about. Uh, and it's just giving them a handhold. So once a week we get together for an hour, uh, sometimes more, sometimes a bit less, uh, and we just talk about what they're trying to, trying to achieve and what they're trying to do. And it's a really great way for me to kind of fill in, again, fill in some holes about what I do and do not know about something. And it, it's, it's quite nice to have that kind of, sort of that fairly personal touch, even though we're not uh, actually there in person, because it's just us, it's just me and them. Uh, sometimes it's quite easy to get lost in kind of the big, kind of wider community. But again, there are certain channels that are really good for tapping in, like the beginners thing is where you know it's kind of a fairly safe environment. You can ask questions that you might not be sure that if you should know the answer or not already. Uh, so that's quite good. And um, all these things, oh, look, do you recognize this from earlier? Um, this was the photo I took. I thought this was really good. I thought this fitted in perfectly uh, to what I was saying. So actually just having involvement in all these communities stops you having the blinkers on, stops you navel gazing, stops you just having one idea and running with it, stops you just having one language and running with it. It encourages you to go off and learn more and explore more. So thank you, Kelvin, for that. Um, and also this, this idea kind of builds into this idea of we stand on the shoulder of giants. Well, for me, actually, it's not giants we're standing on the shoulders of. We're standing on each other's shoulders. I know that's physically not possible, uh, but <laughs> metaphorically, that's what we're doing. We're actually relying on all the work of people like you, people like me, people like you. You don't have to be giants. They don't have to be people up here speaking. The people you're talking to, people you're sitting to next to, people you're going to talk to during the drinks, they're going to inspire you. They're going to give your ideas. All you need to do is actually talk to them. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch of... How many are we doing for time? We must be quite short on time now. I don't want to uh, take you away from drinks. That would be terrible. Oh, we've got five minutes. Uh, if you do want to start a community, um, if you create it, they will come. Well, they might do, um, but if you don't create it, they definitely won't come. So if you, if you don't actually get involved, if you don't do anything, then nothing will happen. If you do something, something might happen. And it is being brave if you're starting a new community, uh, to actually putting yourself out there. You do worry about whether people will come, people will care. I did wonder where, whether anybody would actually still be here at the end of the day to listen to my talk. So it happens to all people like that. Um, but if you go and make an effort, some people will come uh, and get involved. So just a few handy hit, hints and tips. Um, so if you're going to do something, just explain what it is and explain why people should come uh, and then promote it. And again, promote it by explaining why people should come and saying what it is. And, uh, and that way, people will have an opportunity to come. Uh, and using facilities like Skills Matter gives you uh, an easy, easy way to kind of organize it because they'll do most of that for you. You just have to write the blurb about what it is you're actually doing. Um, it, I think it's very important to have a code of conduct thing there. Software craftsmanship has that as well. Um, especially if you're going to do anything with under 18s, you really need to know what you're doing there. If it's over 18s, then code of conduct is just be, uh, just be a good people. Just actually respect people and care about people and care about what they say. Most of us can do that most of the time. It's just putting it out there and making sure people... Uh, are aware of it. Uh, if you're going to have uh, an event, make sure people can find it. 
we had an event for the London Java community where it was at the back. This is the pub. This is the entrance to the pub. That's where the party was, and you had to go upstairs, to kind of go around the bar upstairs, up here, around the corner, and then this place, and there's like people missed it so many times. Uh, so we ended up drawing up a really bad map of what it was, but it worked. It helped people find the actual location. Uh, help people contribute. Who, who's this person? People think this is a Heroku thing, but it's not. It's Pusher. There you go. Um, tell people, uh, yeah, give some people some help in if they want to do talks, lightning talks. Uh, public speaking is not easy. Uh, people get nervous. People don't think they have anything to say. I get these feelings all the time. I've done tons of talks. I still get these feelings. I always get these feelings. But giving them a little bit of help and encouragement. Uh, communities are some of the friendliest audiences you can ever speak in front of. Hopefully, touch wood. Nobody's thrown anything yet, so that's good. Um, and yeah, visualize stuff, so make people aware of what actually what's going on, when things are going on, especially doing a, a non-conference. Um, and yeah, beware of your bias. I, I did this. This is my example of my terrible uh, designs. Um, so uh, I got obsessed with purple that day. Um, and just again, don't let your biases kind of control what you're doing. Uh, seek uh, information and feedback from the community about what you should be doing. Uh, and it'll help the community kind of engage with you again as well. Uh, you, you don't always need a budget, but if you do, if you're going to run something a bigger event, then you do need to kind of uh, plan for a budget as well, especially if you're doing something like a con conference. Um, and if you're going to have sponsors there, again, just be very clear about what's, what options are available for sponsors. Um, if you can, if you're going to provide food, healthy food, that's nice. Don't forget about the vegetarians and the vegans. Uh, they are people too. Um, <laughs> And if you want me to come, then uh, raspberries are nice. I, I do like raspberries, although I'm starting to uh, branch out of my fruit bias as well. Um, things to avoid, well, essentially, don't do it alone. If you can help, if you can find somebody else that will, is willing to help you do community stuff, or even go to the community, even if they're not sure. Just Because going to a community when you've never been to is quite scary as well, so having somebody uh, to go along with you, even if it's for the first time, and you can meet some people. Once you've met some people, it makes it so much easier. If you want to build a community, doing it by yourself is a lot of work, and it can be a lot of stress as well. So getting other people involved is, is so much easier. Uh, if you, when you do something, write down what you've done so you can do it again. Uh, and you can tell I'm rushing because we're coming over to drinks. Drinks time. Nearly two minutes. Uh, <laughs> two minutes. Not that I'm counting. Not that I'm thirsty. I am a bit thirsty. Um, this, is, this is my final slide. Um, again, I thank you very much for listening. I just wanted to encourage you to get involved with your community, uh, whether you're running something or just turning up. Both are equally important. It, it, without a conference, without the attendees, the conference would be nothing. Without community, the, uh, without attendees joining a community and getting involved, that community would be nothing. So enjoy the fun, get an invigoration from the community, learn stuff. And it's good for your career, so get involved. And if you have no community, feel free to start one. Come talk to me if you want to find out more about doing that. Thank you very much, and have a nice drinks. Okay. Um, hello. Hello. It's not working. Okay. Uh, so. We have a... Drinks. Hello. Oh, there we go. Cool. So we have a 15-minute break now before we come back for the panel discussion. Uh, critically, you've got your lanyard. Show that at the bar. Um, drinks tonight have been kindly sponsored by ASOS, so free drinks as long as you show your lanyard at the bar. Um, if we can aim to be back here for five past, um, and then we'll get cracking on with the panel discussion. And after that, we've got some more food, uh, some drinks, and we'll... Can you drink your, bring, bring, can you drink your brings? Yeah, can you drink, drink so your brings back in here? Once, once you've got your drink, you can bring it back in here for the panel Ooh. discussion. There we go. There's lots of smiles for that one. There we go.